Where are they now? The college basketball team that became the first ever 16 seed to upset a number one seed in March Madness, the 2018 UMBC Retrievers. Going into the 2018 March Madness tournament, there had never been a 16 seeded team that has won in the first round. Well, on March 16th, 2018, UMBC shocked the basketball world by beating the number one seeded Virginia by 20 points. Unfortunately for UMBC though, their Cinderella run ended in the second round with a loss to Kansas state. It's pretty crazy to think that that legendary game took place more than five years ago. So in this video, I'll be giving you an update on each one of the retrievers that played in UMBC's legendary March Madness game against Virginia, beginning with the starters. First up is Jarius Lyles, the guy who dropped a game-high 28 points in that upset game. A few months after the tournament, Jarius joined the Utah Jazz for the NBA Summer League, becoming the first player in UMBC history to do so. Jarius would even appear in five pre season games shortly after the summer league, but ultimately would end up on a two-way contract for the 2019 season. In 46 games played in the G League, Jarius averaged a solid 13 points on 27 minutes per game. But this was the only time that we got to see him play professionally in the States. Following the G League, Jarius would take his talents overseas to Germany, where he played two more seasons of professional basketball before playing his last game in 2020. To my understanding, Jarius now spends his time working on his business, which is called Divine Love Wellness. A company that offers a wide range of wellness products designed to nourish the body and solve your health needs. While we might not see Jarius Lyles on a basketball court anymore, it's pretty cool to see him immersed in his own small business. Next up is KJ the Playmaker Mora, the 5'8 point guard from Puerto Rico on this team. After KJ finished playing collegiate basketball in 2018, he went back to Puerto Rico to play professionally in their top tier league. Since then, KJ has spent a little over five years playing pro ball and will be playing this upcoming season with the defending champs in the BSN. Now, KJ actually has a BSN championship under his belt from the 2019 season, but there's a pretty good chance he'll make that two rings after this upcoming season with the Carolina Giants. Besides basketball, it seems like KJ has been spending a lot of his time playing beach tennis via his social platforms. Who knows, with all of the posts he has put out of him playing beach tennis, he might like the sport just as much, if not more, than basketball. Next up is Daniel Atkin, the six foot nine freshman big man that was a paint beast. Dan actually ended up playing six total seasons in college, most recently for Utah State this past collegiate season in 2023. There he averaged 12 points and seven rebounds a game, which earned him the Mountain West Conference Six Man of the Year Award. Currently, Dan is playing professionally in France for SIG Strasbourg in the LNB Pro A, which is the same league that Wemby played in before getting drafted. Next up is Joe Sherburn, the six foot six super skilled shooter on this team. After the Retrievers 2018 tournament, and exit, Joe Sherburn returned to UMBC for his senior season, and he averaged a very solid 14 and 6 at night. Post college, Joe would end up playing professionally in Germany during the middle of 2019, but an injury he faced early in the season brought his basketball career to an end. Nowadays, he's a financial advisor in his home state of Wisconsin and seems to be spending a lot of time with family and loved ones. Next up is Arkel Lamar, a 6 foot 5 do it all wing. Arkel Lamar was actually a sophomore in 2018, and he would end up playing collegiate basketball all the way through 2022. His final season was with the Kansas City Roos, where he averaged a solid 14 and 6 a night. Arkel did play a few games professionally in Switzerland before becoming a life insurance agent, which is the job position he holds to this date. Let's move on to the non-starters in this game. First up being Jordan Grant, a very productive guard who spent most of his games coming off the bench during the end of his collegiate career. After his final college season in 2018, Jordan Grant has spent some time playing professionally overseas. Most recently in 2022, playing for a professional team in Georgia, where he averaged 12 points in 17 games played. That right there is the last update I have on him. Wasn't able to get in contact with him directly and couldn't find information online about what he's been up to this past year. But I do know for a fact that he at least got to the point where he could play pro basketball. And that is something I love to hear. Next up is Max Curran, the six foot nine forward from New Hampshire. Max ended up spending his entire collegiate career at UMBC and made his final appearance in 2019. Max didn't really put up crazy numbers in his final two years with the Retrievers, but he would end up playing professionally in Morocco in 2022, a stint overseas that was unfortunately short-lived due to a knee injury. I spoke with Max directly over DMs, and he has spent the last three months doing rehab with hopes of playing professionally again in 2024, hoping for a speedy recovery out of Max and that he is able to return to basketball soon. And finally, Noah Garrity, the guy who said, 
that beating Virginia was like your first Fortnite victory. Shout out to Ninja, <laughs> hit us up. Nolan's collegiate basketball career ended after the 2019 season. He actually never ended up playing professional basketball. Instead, he turned to business as a career path and currently is a regional sales director in Cleveland. Also worth mentioning, guys like KJ Mora, Joe Sherburn, and Jordan Grant actually played in the 2019 TBT. They were a part of a team called the Hilltop Dogs, which was a squad filled with former UMBC men's hoopers. Unfortunately for the Hilltop Dogs, they lost in the first round of the tournament to the reigning four times champion, Overseas Elite. But maybe in the near future, we will see them try to run it back. What the 2018 UMBC basketball squad was able to do in the March Madness tournament was simply incredible. With FDU upsetting the number one seed of Purdue in this past year's tournament, I think we will continue to see a number 16 seeded team win in the first round. Whenever it happens again, just know it all started with the 2018 UMBC squad. Make sure you check out the Where Are They Now video we did on the 2016 Chino Hills team. This is without question one of the best high school basketball squads ever. The Ball Brothers definitely weren't the only players on the squad who found long-term success in basketball, so give it a watch. And if you're at this point in the video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on post notifications. See you guys in the next one.